Good, good morning, everybody. Sorry I was a little delayed getting walking up the front of the church. A couple of announcements as we we'll jump this and we'll move straight to our announcements. Um, anybody watching the news can't have failed to notice the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. Uh, and on behalf of the Church of Ireland, the Bishop's Appeal is the, the aid agency wing, if you will, of the Church of Ireland. So there'll be a retiring collection after this service and then the next two services uh, towards the, the fin, uh, towards the uh, earthquake relief. Uh, also to let you know that uh, Lenten services will be continued. Apologies due to reasons beyond my control. I couldn't be with you on uh, Wednesday last. God willing, I'll be with you this Wednesday. And we're going to return to the marks of mission and the Jesus shaped life. Uh, a couple of other things can vestry members who are present in the church. Uh, uh, well, uh, one moment. Uh, the. Um, the diddy diddy. Uh, can members stay, member stay, stay after, after the service just for an update? Uh, and all the other notices are either emailed to you or on the website. Um, we will jump forward to the first hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, and I'll come back to the opening prayer. <laughs> Please be seated. There was a question in relation to the Lenten services, the link needed to access them. It should be the same as this link we have for a Sunday morning because it's on the same Facebook page. So the same link should work for both. 
and it'll probably it will be going up on YouTube as well. A huge thank you to John because he does an awful lot of work in the background, including if the w sound is a little wobbly, putting the songs back in again later. Other things we didn't get to mention uh, is the World Day of Prayer, which is in Session Neil Church, and that's on March the 3rd. Uh, the bus trip to Dublin is still going ahead, and the launch of a book on reconciliations by Professor Brendan McSuveen. I hope I pronounced my Irish correctly there, um, and that's on March the 5th. But today we're looking at Jesus has won the victory, and particularly thinking of the verse from Hebrews. Jesus understands every weakness of ours because he was tempted in every way that we are, but he did not sin. In other words, he lived out, not just was he God and God's son, but he lived out how human beings are supposed to be, and God always intended and wanted us to be. So we begin with our opening prayer. The bit I say is in lighter type, and the bit we say together is in bold type. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we have had our songs. We jump next. Are any of you familiar with the term Christus Victor? Well, it's Christ is the victor, and he is a hero and has done much for us. Jesus has conquered sin and death. He has won a victory over that. And we now will come to our readings. And the first reading is from the book of Genesis. Thank you. First reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, reading verses 15 to 17, chapter 3, reading verses 1 to 7. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may eat freely of every tree of the garden, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day when you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took off its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And a chance for us to respond from Romans. Again, our bit we say together is in bold type. You know what sort of times we live in, and you should do, live it properly. It is time to wake up. You know the day when we will be saved is nearer now than we first put our faith in the Lord. Night is almost over, and the day will soon appear. It is time to wake up. We must stop behaving as people who do in the dark and be ready for the light. It is time to wake up. So behave properly as people do in the day. Don't go to wild parties or get drunk. Be vulgar and decent. Don't quarrel or be jealous. It's the time to wake up. And we do in the quietness of our own heart now before God say a quiet prayer of sorry to God before we hear of his absolution.
Let the Lord Jesus be as near to you as the clothes that you wear. Then you won't be satisfied with your selfish desires. Almighty God, who forgives all and truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon, deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have our reading from the Book of Romans, please. The second reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, beginning at verse 12. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all, because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion over yet exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of one man Jesus Christ abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many transgressions brings justification. If because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hear the gospel of our Saviour Christ according to Matthew, beginning at chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness and was tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and after he was banished. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, One does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on that day they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And then splendor, and he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. I pray, Lord, now as we think upon your word, you give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and most especially hearts and wills to respond to your will and to your way, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Well, some of you may find the image of Jesus as superhero, maybe a bit jarring, but I've even seen T-shirts with Jesus in the image of Che Guevara, the revolutionary from South America. But Jesus is truly a hero because he has saved us, and he, in him we can have faith, in him we can have trust, and in him we know he has done good for all of us. He is the victor. 
As a little boy, my favourite hero was Spider-Man. Uh, and it wasn't the more recent incarnations. I used to go to my granny's house on a Friday, and that was on the telly, and I was able to watch it. But we've also got Wonder Woman, Superman, and all the other heroes. And a lot of the children, I think, either dress up with them or have figures. I think a lot of people, almost to them, they seem even more real than, of course, the real hero, who is Jesus himself. But then we have other heroes of faith, and other heroes are well, are well known. I trained in Nottingham, and what did Robin Hood do? He stole from the rich and he gave to the poor. And of course, Jesus saw to the widow and the orphan. We have our own patron saint. And what happened on the hill of Slain, according to legend or reality? Probably reality. He lit an Easter fire, a Paschal fire, and who was lighting a fire on the other hill except the High King of Ireland for a pagan festival? And the High King summoned Patrick, and from there, bit by bit, Patrick converted both the king and the country. And the next bit is probably legend, but who is supposed to have got rid of the snakes from Ireland? Patrick. So, but Patrick was very much in the vein of Jesus, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ above me, Christ and friend of strangers, so forth, to St. Patrick's breastplate. He put his trust in Christ Jesus. So I think we could fairly safely say that for Patrick, Jesus was his hero. So who was Jesus' enemy? Well, in our reading from Matthew, we hear of Satan, one of the fallen angels who's rebelled against God, and we hear of him first appearing on the sea. And what was the name of the two people in the Garden of Eden? Adam and Eve. And if they were to do a test in school before God, how well would they have passed on that occasion? I don't think they would have passed you. I mean, you know the dojo, um, Adam blamed Eve, and Eve blamed the snake, and the snake didn't have a leg to stand on. We may laugh, but we can all see the humor and the reality in it. Satan tried to twist, the, well, did God say you could not? He tried to turn things around, and that is the nature of deception and evil. And unfortunately, neither Adam nor Eve had the nous to see perhaps the deception and fell for it. But thankfully, Jesus did see, and you know, he quoted back scripture to, the, to, the, um, to Satan, and he quoted, uh, you must trust in the Lord your God, and in the end he said, away with him. So Jesus had the smarts, if you will, of the knowledge of the Bible, of the knowledge of his Lord, and on them he had the two men dismissed him. We too have the tools. And not only that, but when we turn to Jesus as Savior, what else does he say he'll give us other than who he is and what he has done? You will receive the Holy Spirit the counselor, the enabler. So it's not as if we're fighting this battle on our own. Jesus sends the other part of the Trinity to be with us in this battle. And Jesus definitely is the hero's life. If you ever watched any of the hero movies, you'll see of their origin and how eloquent, and powerful and strong that they are. You'll see the trials and tribulations they'll go through, and then you'll come to the victory. But did you ever ask yourself where we get that story from? Indeed, some of the greatest fantasy writers very consciously chose to write their stories based on the Bible. Think of Tolkien, the Lord of the Rings. Think of um, C.S. Lewis, Narnia particularly the Lion of the Chinrodo, the Lion, as in the Lion of Judah, 
who is slain comes back to life and brings hope and life back to the land of Narnia. And Jesus certainly had trials. He went to Jerusalem, he could have avoided it. He allowed himself to be arrested. He allowed himself to be put in a mock trial. Remember, it was at night. This is before electric lighting. So any trial in the dark was illegal under Jewish and Roman law. And then he was put on trial for trumped up charges. And then he was beaten and mocked. So much so that he couldn't even carry the cross being the first cross. And it's good that we remember these because we're on the cusp of Easter when we come back to this. But I fear sometimes we know the story and yet we don't know the story or the account. And then he was tried on the cross. And contrary to probably what we see on all the crucifix, Jesus would have nothing on. So he would have been naked and hung before everybody. Remember, he's a Jewish man, so that is utter shame. Shame to be naked, shame to be tortured, and shame to be killed before everybody. Yet he endured that, let alone the fact that he was suffering terribly and died. So Jesus went through a lot, to say the least. And yet he commended himself to his father. And we know that on the third day he rose again, and it's the third day according to the sun going up and down. That's why our churches faced east, nearly all of them, the rising of the sun. That's why we have a cross. And that's why we don't worship on a Saturday, we worship on a Sunday. Because the Jewish forebears worshiped on Saturday and still do, we shifted to Sunday because of this. So such is the hero and the saving power of Jesus that the whole world was turned upside down. And yet I feel and fear that many have lost sight of the real hero and the real need to be saved. So we have Superman's logo. You're all familiar with it. Well, I wonder what might it look if it was Jesus' logo. Well, we'd certainly need a cross, would we not? Because it's through the cross and the blood of Jesus that you and I can come to be saved. So we have our Jesus is my hero. Now, due to technical difficulties, I was unable to print one out for all of you in the church. But if you look at your notice sheets, you'll see on the top left-hand corner, you have the same logo. And many people have a badge, everything, everything these days. I support this, that, and the next thing. Well, here is your badge, saying that Jesus is my hero. You can wear it if you wish, but all you can do like I do. I wear a cross, but I wear it hidden, so that I know he's my hero. And you can take that to heart as your hero. So, as a way of responding, we're going to use the family creed. So, can we stand? And I'll use the bidding word, the beginning word, and then we'll say the words in bold type. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through the name and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And then, um, power from Jesus, we are one with you in the battle for what is right and good and true. We are on your side. Make us strong when we are tempted to do wrong. Courageous Jesus, we may see wrong things in the world. We are on your side. Make us strong to stand up for what is pure and just and fair. Mighty Jesus, we are ready for battle. We are on your side. We all say, Amen. So can you please be seated for a moment? Because we're going to have some prayers before I close. So we've got my Jesus, my hero. Is there any particular things we'd like to pray for today? 
Syria was that like Syria? Yeah. Please expi ex um, uh, yes. Please understand that the rector has dyslexia and his spelling may be very creative. Peace. And there are many known to us who over recent days and weeks we've been praying for, we pray for them today. We pray peace, particularly in the land of Israel, Palestine, the Holy Land. There's been much war there in South Sudan, in Congo, uh, and um, not least in Ukraine, Syria, the anniversary. Uh, Ukraine and um, Russia, and Syria as well. We pray for those uh, who are breathing and all the, the many, many trials and tribulations that are going on in Syria and Turkey. Oh. We pray for the family of um, the policeman in, uh, who was shot in the north and most especially the, uh, the children as well who were present at that and for the community there in Oma. We pray for our near neighbours in Northern Ireland, uh, especially with the ongoing negotiations, Europe and Britain and so forth. We pray, Lord, that while we know there are many things that are held dearly, we might be able to work together and decide our differences and begin to move forward together. In Jesus' name. Young people. We pray for young people, teenagers and young adults, especially at those who try and follow Jesus as hero and in faith, because it is especially difficult for them that they may know your peace and your courage. For food, thank you for food. Thank you, Jesus, for the food and the shelter that we have. We have so much and many have so little. Thank you, Lord, that we have, you have given us so much. And we're sorry, Lord, for the times when we don't respond to you, we don't think of you, and we don't renew our faith in you. Help us in this season of Lent as we take the journeys towards Eastern the Cross that you took ahead of us, may we realize how much you've done for us and yet how much you love us and how much you call us out from where we are to be better and to be a better place. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So we're going to stand to sing our first hymn here. Fight the good, fight with all thy might. Christ is thy strength. Let's stand to sing.
We now come to our final hymn, please. And we are marching in the light of God. And then as you can see, it changes to we are living in the love of God and we're moving in the power of God. This is the closing words of the Lord's Prayer, but it's also a doxology, which means an understanding of who God is. Maybe we can say this together. It's based on the Lord's Prayer. Yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory. For you are the king, the ultimate victor on our hero, forever and ever. Amen. Keep well, keep safe, and God bless. Um, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. We can ask festive members from the two parishes to stay behind. That would be great. Thank you.